Good morning, everyone. I'm Council Member Diana Ayala, and this meeting is called to order. Again, good morning. My name is Diana Ayala, and I am the chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I am joined today by my colleagues on the committee, Council Members Brennan, Powers, Yeager, Lander, Chin, Kalos, and Kuhl. Today, we will be voting on an introduction number 2311A, sponsored by Council Member Powers, in relation to allowing restaurants to access customer data collected by third-party delivery apps. Sorry, let me take this off, because it's... There is a reason that New York City is considered a global food capital. We have some of the best eateries and cuisine diversity that you can find. In fact, the food of over 150 countries is served in New York City, and if you tried a different restaurant every day, it would take you a decade to reach them all. Across the five boroughs, you can find exceptional food and everything from street vendor carts and trucks and mom and pop eateries to fine dining Michelin starred restaurants. It is no wonder that after lodging, the restaurant industry is the city's largest contributor to tourism. The industry is also a vital source of employment and a, and a key contributor to the economy. Prior to COVID-19 pandemic, there was more than 23,600 food establishments in New York City, which contributed to nearly 27 billion in taxable sales. Furthermore, in 2019, the industry accounted for one, accounted for one in every 12 private sector positions, supported around 317,800 jobs. Clearly, the food and restaurant sector is a pivotal economic contributor and an essential component of the city's identity to New Yorkers and visitors alike. That is why we must do all that we can to help keep this industry alive and thriving. I am proud of the work that this committee has done so far over the past year and a half to support the industry, whether the COVID-19 em um, emergency, including permitting recovery surcharge, suspending various fees and applications, and of course, establishing the use of public streets and sidewalks to accommodate outdoor dining. We have heard from food establishments that these lifelines were crucial, but we know that the ongoing fallout from COVID-19 will be felt for years to come, so we have to continue to find creative ways to support the industry. As the hospitality industry looks to rebuild, we have the opportunity to ensure that new landscape for restaurants is more equitable and fair than what existed before the pandemic. This is why we are voting on intro 2311A today. This bill would require third-party food delivery apps, such as Grubhub, DoorDash, and Uber Eats to share the customer data they collect, with the restaurants fulfilling the order. Third-party apps helped keep restaurants afloat during the peak of the pandemic, when the only option available was delivery and takeout, and these apps saw their profits explode as a result. One report estimated that without the COVID-19 emergency, sales for third-party platforms would have grown by approximately 38%, which is significantly below the actual sales growth of 122% achieved due to the pandemic. For every order placed through one of the apps, consumers hand over a throw of valuable information. However, even though they are customers of the, the restaurants who the food is being, where the food they are buying, as well as the app who facilitates the order, the restaurant is typically precluded from accessing this information. The third-party apps are accurate, acutely aware of the value of the customer data and have an interest in limiting the sharing of this information to protect their own growth. Running analytics of current customer data enables the apps to expose cus uh, customers to restaurants that pay a high commission to the platform, creating a hierarchy of advertisement and search results to benefit the app. Ownership of data of thousands of restaurants in the city also enables the apps to create targeted restaurant concepts that exist only on their platforms, thereby depending, uh, deepening dependency on their products. Platforms like Uber Eats, for example, persuades restaurants to open virtual restaurants, which are restaurants with an actual storefront or dining room, and rebrand their cuisine to meet the demand gleaned from the customer data. According to a recent report analyzing which apps track and share customer data, some food delivery apps were, uh, were some of the most invasive. For instance, according to the report, Uber Eats shared half of all of the customer data it collected with other third parties. Meanwhile, when it came to collecting data to benefit their own businesses, Grubhub collected 64% of personal data while Uber Eats collected 57%. Food delivery apps have lobbied the council to try to kill this bill by arguing that they are concerned about consumer privacy. 
Given the scale of their data collection and sharing operations, it is difficult to believe that the food delivery apps are actually concerned about consumer data privacy. Although the apps play a role in facilitating food ordering and delivery, it is the restaurant that produces the product which is all, uh, with its own labor. Therefore, consumers, customers of the app are also uh, customers of the restaurant, and the app should not be exclusive beneficiaries to this data. This is especially true given that it is common in the restaurant industry for 80% of the restaurant's business to come from only 20% of its customers. Restaurants have the right to know who their loyal customers are. Thus, customer data is crucial for the survival of the restaurant industry. Under intro 2311A, if a restaurant requests customer data from an order place for its business through a third-party app, the app must provide this data. The information will consist of simply the customer's name, phone number, email address, delivery address, and the contents of the order. All the information that is re readily handed over by customers now when they use the platforms. And unlike the platforms, who are not limited by any city legislation on how to use customer data, intro 2311A would prohibit restaurants from selling, renting, or disclosing the information for financial benefit without express consent from the customer. The customer would also be able to withdraw the consent to using their information and request that the restaurant delete their information. As more of our daily activities move online, the production and use of customer data will continue to be paramount. I commend Councilmember Powers for his thoughtful consideration in intro 2311A, which I believe strikes the right balance between ensuring that customer data can be sold as a commodity to restaurants, while also providing them equitable access to the data that they help to create. The food delivery platforms are middlemen between the consumer and the restaurant, and they should not be the exclusive gatekeepers and beneficiaries of the valuable information. Therefore, I encourage my colleagues to vote in the affirmative on this bill. Before I call on the clerk to call a roll, I will pass it over to the, uh, the bill sponsor, Councilmember Powers, to make a statement. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. And it's hard to follow that uh, well said explanation of the bill and the balance that we're striking here today. I want to thank the chair and members of the committee for taking up this bill today and bringing it for a vote. It's my bill, Intro 2311, which will empower restaurants by providing them access to their customers' basic information, with name, telephone number, address, email, and order placed. Uh, this is part of an effort here that we've been taking in the last year to really help our restaurant industry, which has been very hit hard, hit very hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Customers were forced to stay at home and many turned to delivery options. Whether it's outdoor dining or to go alcohol beverage purchases, we've had to think creatively in the past year about how to support our restaurants and bars during this difficult and unprecedented year. Restaurants still need our support and resources even as we start to reopen, including basic information about their customers so they can market and run their business better. For them, knowledge is power and having simple information about their customers will allow restaurants to make strategic business decisions and choices about their futures. And for decades, decades predating the migration to delivery apps, restaurants receive this basic information every time a customer ordered. And I can tell you simply, my father was a restaurant owner. I used to take those orders and I used to deliver food. And that I, I used to get that information every time an order came into the restaurant, where the food was going, what the phone number was, and the individual's order and their name. With more and more people turning to technology as an intermediary to traditional and brick and mortar services, services we need to strike the right balance between those that supply the platforms and retain all of the customer's data and the restaurants who rely on them but should have basic access to their own customer information. That's the goal of the bill. The legislation ensures customers will be informed and have a choice about their information being shared, as well as an opportunity to withdraw consent at any point in time. And for the restaurants that may not want this data, they will have a choice in whether or not they can opt in to receive it or not. Restaurants will be prohibited from selling it or in any way disclosing customer data to any party in exchange for financial benefit. Customers' privacy is maintained and protected under federal, state, and city laws. I'm proud of this bill and will be setting a precedent here today. And again, as a son of a, of a former restaurant owner, it's really important to me that we take steps to help these small businesses. I want to thank Chair Ayala for holding this hearing and bring this bill, bring, holding a hearing and bring this bill to a vote. I want to thank the Speaker for his support of the bill and the legislative staff, especially Stephanie Jones and Rachel Cordero, for their hard work on this bill. 
and of course my chief of staff, Kay Theobald, and my, correction, and my corrections communications director, Kay Dija, for all their work here today as well. Thank you, and of course I ask you all to vote in the affirmative. Thanks, thank you. Back to the chair. Thank you, Councilmember Powers. I also want to recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Koslowitz and Councilmembers Menchaca. I will now call on the clerk to call the roll. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, proposed introduction 2311A, Chair Ayala. I vote aye. Chin. I vote aye. Kalos. I vote aye on all. Ku. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. Councilmember Kozlowitz votes aye. Lander. Uh, I vote aye. I do want to note that I thought that some of the concerns that Councilmember Yeager raised in Democratic conference about uh, really not hand-waving at data privacy and being thoughtful about where this council is allowing data to be shared and spread are real. Uh, and I think they're important for this council and this city to think about more broadly. In this case, because it's data that I think most customers believe they are giving to uh, the person who is providing their order and because I think the imbalance of power between the platforms and the restaurants is so grave, um, I think it's merited, but I do think those are important concerns for us to consider for the future. I vote aye, thank you. Menchaca. Oh, gotta turn it on. Hi, committee, can I have some time to explain my vote? Yes. So, um, yeah, this is on the line of privacy. I, I just want to say that uh, in the last few hours, I've been getting a lot of notes from advocates in the immigrant world who are concerned about some of the privacy pieces. This bill can be stronger with some protections, uh, like not allowing for the data to be uh, in direct flow to some of the federal agencies that have been deporting some of our neighbors, like Homeland Security and ICE. So maybe we can work on a follow-up bill that can strengthen that. Uh, we just got these notes in the last few hours, but I wanted to make sure their voices were in the room and that we can address some of these issues as we move forward and as implementation happens. I vote aye. Brennan. I'd like to uh, associate myself with uh, remarks from Councilman Lander, and I vote aye. Jaeger. You may. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate the comments from my colleagues. I will be voting no today. The, the idea that what we've been doing here in the council to help restaurants, I agree with that. We've been doing that for the last couple of months. We've been doing that tremendously in many ways. But I think we've also creatively stretched the relationship between the pandemic and what we do here in the council that helps restaurants. This is not a COVID-19 related bill. This has nothing to do with COVID-19. We can pretend it does because that's the doorway by which we enter to doing this bill, but it has nothing to do with it. This is in essence a contract of adhesion. We are forcing the consumers who do not know that their data is being handed over to restaurants for permanent keeping to have that data over, handed over. The fix for this is very simple. If restaurants want to keep the information that, that they're not getting because the apps took the order, put a menu in the bag saying for 10% coupon, sign up to our mailing list, it would be fixed. Most people would do it. What we're doing is we're removing the choice from consumers. Now the answer to that concern of mine, of course, is, oh, but we're gonna force the consumers, we're gonna force the apps to put a, an opt out. And what I ask my colleagues and I ask everybody is, how many people read through the opt out questions before they just, no, 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 let's keep going, let's just get my order in. When you want a pizza from the guy, you're just gonna order your pizza. You're not reading the, the disclosures, you're not doing the check yes, check no, check this, check that, you're not opting out. So this would, in essence, take private data and hand it over to restaurants, the corner restaurant that may not have the kind of secure platforms that the app companies have, and they would have this information and they'd have it in perpetuity. 
So I'm going to vote no because this is not a consumer-friendly bill. It's, in fact, if it's anything, it's an anti-consumer bill. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. By vote of eight in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstention, item has been adopted by the committee. Madam Chair, that is a full committee. Thank you, and with that, this meeting is adjourned.